Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to our NUS Computing e Open House 2021. Uh, my name is Dr. Anand Ramchan. I'm from uh, the School of Computing, Department of Information Systems and Analytics, where I'm a senior lecturer. And in this session, I'm going to try to answer uh, any questions you might have about our school, about our programs, and admission. Uh, before we begin, uh, I'm going to take care of some house. Uh, keeping details uh, with the program, but if you have any questions, feel free to start sending them in over uh, social media. So this is the last session for our open house. Thanks for joining us today. Um, after this hour, we have normal live sessions, but any of the previous sessions for today are available uh, as video recordings on our social media channels. Now those channels are um, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and you can watch uh, any of the sessions that you see listed here uh, over there. So you can always come in and talk to us there live, uh, but we're also available on Discord and on Telegram. We'll be on Discord until 6 p.m. today where our staff and our students are available to tell you more, answer your questions in depth about the experience of studying uh, and about the programs that we offer. Uh, and from tomorrow until Saturday, you'll be able to get in touch with us over Telegram. Now, if you are participating in our eOpen House, you'll know that we have a game going on. And there's a QR code on the screen right now that's an important part of that game. So if you're participating, this is one of the QR codes that you need to scan. And if you're not participating yet, please feel free to check out join.comp.nus.edu.sg. This game goes on for the rest of the day until midnight. Uh, and you have to find the right QR codes to scan to win some very attractive prizes. So please check out the details there. And you'll see a QR code on the top of the screen. That's one that you want to scan. Now, if you're uh, looking for answers about admission details, or if you want to know more about our programs, please visit these two URLs, or always just drop us an email at socug at comp.nus.edu.sg. And like I said, you can always uh, talk to us over uh, live chat on Discord today or on Telegram from tomorrow through Saturday and email or social media after that. So let me encourage you, if you have any questions that you want to ask about our programs, about joining computing, uh, please feel free to send them in and uh, I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. We'll try to get as many uh, questions from you guys as we can before the session ends. So let's start. We got a question coming in. What do you think about applying for a double major in a course that is not conventional? Uh, for instance, computing and physics, out of interest in both topics. Well, that's a really interesting question. You have that opportunity here at NUS to kind of create that program that you like, where you could do a major uh, or two majors from different faculties. And we have so many different faculties here at NUS, so you can really uh, design uh, an interesting combination of majors for your four years here. Um, and it's uh, interesting that, you know, if you don't, if you want to do something that's not very conventional, that's fine too. There are opportunities out there, uh, especially since majority, uh, well, especially since there are global opportunities available for our competing graduates, right? We don't just get jobs here. Many of our graduates, they go through internships, uh, jobs, interviews, and so on with companies around the world. Right, so even though it may not seem like a conventional subject area here in Singapore, there are opportunities out there. Uh, and the wonderful thing about NUS is because it is a globally ranked university, having a degree from NUS does open a lot of doors for you internationally. Right, so those job opportunities are available uh, for you. So I, I don't think that that is a bad idea. I think that's you got to go with what interests you uh, and you'll enjoy learning it at the same time. So let's see, we have another question here. We do. Is a major in computer science and a minor in another program in NUS, in other NUS's colleges, good enough to land a good career on graduation? Yeah, I, I think that just having a major in computer science already is enough to give you a good career on graduation. Complementing that with a minor uh, from one of our other schools or colleges here on campus, 
uh, is just wonderful gravy to top that, right? Um, adding that just gives you a little bit more dimension, uh, gives you a little bit more of a multidisciplinary approach, helps you to think about things in a different way, and that can inform your computing career or your computing studies as well. So I, I do not foresee you having any problems. If you're able to graduate here uh, well, you will have no problems getting a good career or starting a good career after graduation. Do SOC professors conduct interviews for the merit scholarship, global merit scholarship, if the applicant is from SOC? If so, what are interviewers looking out for? Well, I probably have to defer to somebody here who uh, is responsible for the scholarship programs to be able to answer that. Does anybody have an answer to that? Right, but from what I understand, um, our professors are involved in interviews, uh, but who gets scheduled for which set of interviews and who the other people are involved in those interviews uh, is it's not something that I know right now. I don't think we really have that. Yeah. So I, I think a really good way to get this question answered is to drop us an email or to put this up into uh, Discord and talk to us there. And we'll get somebody who's able to give you an answer to that. What makes NUS Computer Science Program one of the best in the world? Well, that's a really interesting uh, question. There's several different things, I think, that contribute to this ranking. So I think one important thing to recognize with global university rankings is they change. They change fairly often. Every three months, there's another new ranking out there. And you'd find that the different computer science programs go up and down. Uh, the important thing about our programs or that we're, that we're particularly proud of is that we're quite consistently high. We may not always be number one in Asia, we may not always be in the top 10 in the world, but we're always up there. And there are a few things that contribute to that. I think the major one in terms of education is that the people who teach your classes here at NUS Computing are experts in the computing field. So you do have professors here who are at the forefront of their fields. And it's really a wonderful experience to take a class and learn from someone who's at the forefront of their field. Right? I myself sit in on some of their classes because it's just so interesting to, to learn from them uh, about how they see their area and about some of the latest things that they're working on in their area. And it's very different when you're studying in a different uh, university where maybe you don't have the same people working in those research areas. And the way they teach the classes would be slightly different. So you have a lot of very passionate professors here who are experts, who are teaching you, and at the same time they're doing their research here. And that can make a very exciting uh, education. I think that's one of the most uh, intriguing things about studying here. You have that opportunity to do that here, and you might not have that opportunity in other universities around the world. I have no prior experience in programming, other than a module I took on C++. Well, that, congratulations, that's already quite good. Will I struggle? I studied mechanical engineering in the polytechnic. No, I, I, don't, I don't see that as a problem as all, at all. We do not assume that any of our students coming in have any prior knowledge, prior experience with computing, in fact, sometimes some of the practices that you learn from courses outside can give you a lot of bad habits. And so we don't assume any of that. Uh, we, when you come in here, you're a fresh canvas, right? We treat you as uh, somebody who has no prior experience and you start learning with us from scratch. So not having any experience, or even if you have a little bit of experience in C++ programming is great. It's completely not necessary. You will not struggle uh, in any particular way um, in terms of programming that's uh, going to be any different from anybody else. You have no disadvantage from having not learned anything before. What are some of the companies that NUS Computing students intern in? Uh, well, maybe I can share a slide with you guys on that. Uh, hang on, let me pull it up here. So our students do work 
in a variety of companies. Right, so um, we have or we offer internships and uh, jobs uh, from companies both locally and globally, both in high tech and not in high tech industries. If you look at some of the companies where our students are working in, you'd see the typical high tech names, Google, Facebook, IBM, SAP, uh, Palantir, but you also see uh, companies in non-technology related uh, industries like finance, PayPal, JP Morgan, uh, Citibank and DBS. Uh, you'd also see uh, transportation, logistics, um, hospitality and hotels, you'd see game companies uh, and even healthcare companies. So our graduates go almost everywhere. And like I said, it's not just local. We do have students who have got internships overseas and many students who have got career positions overseas as well. So I hope that answers your question. You can always get uh, more details by chatting with us on Discord, but that's just some of the companies that our students uh, have recently got into. And you see that there are large MNCs and, and they're also local companies too. So here's a question on uh, the student life. What's the workload like every semester? Well, each semester our students uh, take a recommended set of five modules, right? So you have to try to finish uh, your five modules each semester. On some semesters, you can do a little bit less. Some semesters, you can do a little bit more. But in general, what the workload is like is to consider your undergraduate degree like a full-time job. You're a student and you have a job from eight to five, and that's to uh, work towards getting your graduation, getting your degree, understanding and learning. Um, the workload, it, re it includes uh, individual work, it includes group work, it includes projects and assignments, uh, but there's, I mean, they're really offered in a very vast variety of, of manners. Uh, not every mod the modules are not really the same because each professor runs their own module and so they choose the best experience they can for students. Uh, and we don't dictate how modules should be run for each class, right? We leave it to professors and the school and the department to figure out what's the best way to run these courses so that our students have the best experience. And, and so the workload that we try to recommend is that you do five courses a semester. Uh, sorry, five, yeah, five courses a semester and each course generally has a, a two to three hour lecture a week and then some lab or tutorial time. Okay, let's move on. What uh, will a double degree in computer science and business be beneficial in terms of employment prospects? It's, it's not really very easy to say that. It's always going to be, there's always a trade-off, right? Um, a good degree in computer science is really good for your employment prospects. Adding on a second degree in business adds on a lot of workload to that. So like I said earlier, your undergraduate degree is a full-time job. Doing a double degree is kind of adding more than one full-time job, right? You're having one and a half or two full-time jobs to worry about. And if you, you, you're gonna have to balance off the trade-off with your lifestyle, the amount of courses that you need to do with other activities you do on campus, staying here for four years versus staying here for five years, uh, and, and see whether that weighs out but generally having a double degree can be advantageous for your employment opportunities. Or you can try to take a degree program where you can study both things. Our information systems degree or our analytics program, for instance, tries to marry both worlds of computer science and business. Right? And so that can give you a shorter four-year option to do both areas. What are some of the universities that NUS students can do exchange programs in? Well, that is, well, there's a very large number of partners that we have. So generally what happens is between universities, there are partnerships where we send some students there, they send some students here. Uh, currently, of course, because of the pandemic, uh, exchanges are limited, but we have exchange partners in some of the best universities around the world and in almost all countries around the world. So most of our students would enjoy going to 
places where uh, the computing culture is uh, quite significant, it's quite hot, places like Israel or the US, and especially on the West Coast um, or, or the East Coast, on either coast of the US. Uh, but then we have students who are uh, who explore, right? students who will go and do exchanges in Asia, and some who will go into Europe, uh, and then of course North America. And so we have partners uh, located everywhere around the world. I think for more details, if you want to find a detailed list of that, uh, you'll be able to find that on the NUS website and look at uh, looking for exchanges. You'll be able to find a list of partner universities. And of course, we also have programs like the NOC. Um, where you can mix not just a university exchange experience, but you can also do an internship at the same time. And our NOC is offered in specific countries with specific university partners. Uh, and, and those are quite interesting programs to get into as well. So you can get those details of who those partner universities are from uh, the NUS website. Take a look there. And of course, if you can't find it, just message us on social media and we'll try to give you the link from there. Right. <laughs> what are computer science lab sessions like? Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, I run some lab classes myself. Uh, and I think the lab sessions differ from module to module. They tend to have one thing in common, and that is they're fairly hands-on. Right? All our lab sessions involve you doing something uh, on the spot. Uh, and, and it could be hardware, working with hardware devices, drones, uh, autonomous vehicles, and things like that. Uh, working with electronics if you're in computer engineering. Um, and if you're in computer science or information systems, uh, you're very likely working with computers to build software. And on our information systems, then we also work with IoT devices, right? So you're, you're uh, sitting in the lab and you're actually working with sensors and so on. Uh, to be able to figure out, well, how do we integrate them into our environment? Uh, so as the lab sessions are very different from module to module, I think the important thing to note is that they all have one thing in common and that they're very hands-on. It's a very practical school, with a very practical degree. We, we like people who practice right, uh, what, what they're interested in doing. Uh, so there's a question here, what will the computer science course teach us? So in general, every uh, module has um, a number of different a number of different modules. Uh, sorry, every, every program has a number of different modules. The computer science program really focuses on you learning how to make technologies work better. That's our area of focus here, uh, that you want to be able to understand how technologies work. You want to be able to build good systems and technologies, and you want to focus on improving how they work. Right? And so that means as, as part of this, you're going to have to understand what are some of the problems that we have with our existing technologies. And you're going to have to understand uh, how to create software and how to develop algorithms, algorithms that work in those softwares to make the technologies work better for us. So over here, once you've joined our computer science program, you have the option to then focus or choose an area of focus. And we offer several different areas of focus. So once you've decided what area of focus you wanna, wanna choose or what you want to pursue, um, then you have to do modules in those courses. So depending on the area of focus that you choose, the types of, of modules uh, are dictated from there. And so then that curriculum is, is, is uh, around that area. So we get this question pretty often. What's the difference between computer science and computer engineering? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll share, I can share a slide with you guys that talks a little bit about the difference between all our programs. So let's try to put this slide up. And so the world of computing is uh, fairly complex and large. In four years, you can't study everything. And so we've split up the world of computing into five different areas. And these five areas represent uh, the five different uh, degree programs that we offer. Computer engineering, computer science, information systems, analytics, and then information security. 
Now, where our computer engineering and computer science differ is they're, they are still more towards the technology end of the spectrum as when you compare them to our information systems or analytics programs, which are more towards how organizations and people use technologies and data. So we're still on the side of the spectrum where we're dealing with the technologies. Computer engineering tends to focus a lot more on the building of physical technologies and the software that gets those technologies to work. And computer science, it's a little bit leaning more towards the center, which is, yes, we want those technologies to work. We want them to work smart and intelligently. We want to put in algorithms that really make them work well, improve how the technology works. But at the same time, we also want to learn how to help people adopt uh, these technologies so they can use them to solve problems in their real life. So where our computer engineering counterparts would focus a lot on hardware and the types of uh, uh, physical artifacts or products that are being built, uh, computer science people would focus more on software and trying to understand how to get that software to work better to make the hardware do what it needs to do. I hope that answers that uh, question well. You can always talk to some of our uh, current students in Computer Science and Engineering Live on Discord and ask them for uh, their advice. Okay, we got a question here on IB students. Are they more disadvantaged compared to A-level students in terms of managing workload for computing programs? Uh, I do not think so at all. Um, once you come in here, we do not know whether you are an IB student or an A-level student post-admission. Once you get into NUS and come into class, uh, nobody knows whether you're an IB student or an A-level student uh, or you came in from a diploma program. So um, I don't think that there's any particular reason to believe that you're disadvantaged. Uh, I do believe IB students uh, compete and participate in our schools and campus activities uh, and classes without any problems at all. So what do ComScience students learn that Biz Analytics students do not? So I think it's important to recognize that there is some overlap between what you learn. For many of our programs, I just showed you like five different programs that we cover at our school. Um, everybody starts off in the first semester with some core courses that you would tend to do uh, like programming. And everybody learns how to do that. And you may learn different languages for analytics versus computer science. But everybody learns the principles of programming and the basics of computer, computing. As you progress through uh, your experience here at NUS, you have to make decisions about what courses you want to do in year three, in year four, uh, and largely in year two, um, to get to your program requirements. Now, in choosing those courses, you can decide how far you want to move away from that center line. And if our flagship program being the computer science program, most of our students are going to be studying courses related to computing, uh, related to computer science. Our business analytics students will tend to study courses that are more related to how data is used, uh, the mathematics behind analyzing data, the computing technologies behind managing that analysis and managing large amounts of data. Uh, whereas our computer science students would tend to focus more on algorithm design, uh, building software, uh, building large systems. Uh, and, and so they're at, you know, at some point of time in the second year, you'll see students slowly diverge towards different areas. And then your third and fourth year is based on the modules that you choose, right? That you get to decide what you want to do. So our computer science students um, do learn, do go deeply into computing, you learn things that some of the analytics students do not, where they might do things in uh, related to databases that are of concern to analytics, you would go deeper into databases as a technology. They might not do things in networking, you would do things in networking. And they might not do things in uh, large system design or, or development, but you might do that. So it really depends on the courses that you choose. The decision is really up to you to choose what you want to learn 
uh, pass the basic core set of courses that everybody has to take. So let's see if we have any more questions there. What's the difference between the business analytics course in SOC data science and uh, uh, data science and analytics course? And how do I determine which is more suitable for me? Well, there is uh, some difference between the two courses. Let me um, put up a slide here to try to help you understand that difference. So the world of business analytics is, again, a very complicated world, just like computing. It's a big enough world where there are several spheres of, of expertise in there. And to be good at analytics, you need three things. Uh, you need to know computing for large amounts of data. You need to understand uh, business and the context of which you're trying to solve problems with analytics. And you need to understand statistics and how to analyze data. Now, you can study all three of these and be good at business analytics. Alternatively, you could say, well, I only want to do one of these things and do a little bit of the other two. And so you'd find there's a mix of courses offered. Right? At the School of Computing, our focus is to give everybody a good rounding in all three. We're the oldest analytics program among the analytics programs in, in, in NUS. And so when we started, we said, well, we want everybody to have uh, equal understanding of all three of these disciplines so that you're a well-rounded analytics professional. Some of the newer programs uh, around the world do not necessarily take that point of view. And they might say, well, you know, let's spend more time focused on statistics and not really understanding computing or business as much. Or you might have the opposite, which is, well, let's really look at business, but we can see how analytics can be useful, but not really focusing on understanding how the computing part of it works or how the statistics part really works. So as you look at different programs to evaluate where do I want to go in, in this analytics world? You need to understand that the three areas need to be there for everyone. And, and whether you do a degree program that offers all three areas equally, or whether you do a degree program that skews heavily on one area and not the other two, uh, is a choice that you need to make. Our personal, uh, our, sorry, our, our school's approach is that we want students who are very well balanced in all areas because when it comes to analytics, you don't really know what problems you're going to have to solve. And whatever problem you do have to solve, you are going to need these three skills. You need to know the computing behind the large amounts of data you're going to have to deal with. You need to know how to analyze it and the mathematical, uh, statistical, and numerical methods behind it. And you need to understand how to know what kind of problems you can solve for businesses with data analytics. So that's our approach to trying to understand that. So I hope that gives you an answer to that question. But again, you can talk to our analytics students uh, online on Discord uh, and, and get the insights from them as well uh, through the chat. Do you recommend a double degree or a double major in which CS is included in either one? Uh, yes. <laughs> the short answer is yes, I think you should do a degree program in computing, whether it's CS, IS, analytics, security, or computer engineering. Uh, do I recommend a double degree? I think a lot of students come into NUS uh, very keen on overloading themselves, and they don't really appreciate how difficult getting one degree is. It's like a full-time job, that when you try to do a double degree, you might give up a lot of opportunities uh, for other types of experiences you could have on campus. So I think it's a personal choice that you need to make. I think that doing a double degree or a double major in CS uh, or any of our programs is highly recommended. Um, and what you choose to partner that degree with is, is very flexible here in NUS. But uh, what might be useful is for you to talk to students who are in the double degree programs and to try to understand 
what you'll be having to do on a day-to-day -day basis or in terms of giving up time uh, and then deciding whether you want to experience other things on campus or focus on getting two degrees at the same time uh, while you're getting your single degree, right? getting a double degree while you're getting a single degree. Is it possible to take a degree in computer science and major in analytics or information systems at NUS Computing? No, you can't do uh, multiple programs or multiple majors uh, with us. Um, there's a large overlap, like I said, in the first year where you're doing some very similar core courses, uh, but it will not really be useful for you to to do two different majors or two different degrees um, that are so close to each other. The wonderful thing about doing a double major is that you get to mix your computing experience with another way of thinking. Uh, it could be from arts, it could be from science, uh, and it'd be very useful for you to mix that together. So if we don't make it possible for students in the same school to have two different degrees or two different majors offered by the same school. And so you can't do that. Will the workload be too heavy if I want to take a degree in computer science and major in math? Um, no, we have many students who are doing double majors or double degrees. Uh, and many of them start off by saying, yes, I want to do it. And after a little bit of time, they realize, well, no, you know, there are other opportunities that I'd rather pursue. Uh, and so they scale back on whether they're going to do that double major or not. But we do have many people who graduate with computer science and, and math, computer science and statistics, computer science and business, uh, or, or information systems and business and so on. Uh, so I don't think that the workload is too heavy. We've seen many people successfully go through this program every year. Uh, so it's, it is easily not a problem. But like I said, it's a trade-off because you're taking up so much time with extra courses. Uh, you are giving up on other things that you could be doing or pursuing on campus. Can I do a double major in analytics and business? Uh, let me check here if we can do that. Can we do a double major in analytics and business? Ken? Yeah, Ken, right? I believe we, can, we, do have, we do offer uh, the opportunity for students in business analytics to explore uh, the BBA program at the business school. Um, so you do have the, the chance to do that. If not doing it as a second major, you do have the opportunity to do minors there or to actually go and uh, take courses there. In fact, part of the curriculum of the analytics program does involve you taking courses that are very highly business in nature. Is there a particular type of rap laptop recommended for SOC students? Uh, no, you do need a laptop that um, allows you to install software on it. Right? Some laptops that run off operating systems like Chrome are, are purely cloud-based. Uh, you can just run uh, you know, uh, Google Docs and so on on it. It just runs with the browser. You don't want that. What you do need is a normal uh, business or a desk, or, you know, home-based laptop that allows you, or that has an operating system that allows you to install uh, applications in there. Uh, so you do not need a special laptop. You do not need the highest end laptop. Um, and so you want to be a little bit uh, prudent about the decision of what type of laptop to get. Uh, you don't have to go for the highest end. I would recommend that you look, uh, our students do have um, three major operating systems that they use here, uh, Windows, uh, Macs, and uh, Linux computers. So you can look for a laptop that runs any of those operating systems. In the current situation, how are classes conducted? Well, some of our classes are being conducted online, particularly when the class uh, is got enough students that we can't put you in a location and be uh, socially distanced safely. So in those situations, we have to move the class online, at least for some of those classes like lectures. 
for lab sessions, tutorials, or for smaller classes, uh, we have the option of doing it here physically in class under the current situations. Of course, if the situation worsens and uh, the rules tighten, we'll have to go back to fully doing things online, like during the lockdown period. Are there many group projects in NES computing, or is it mostly solo assignments? There's a mix. Depending on the module that you're taking, modules choose, or professors choose to offer assignments that can be group-based. Some could be individual assignments, uh, and you have some modules that have both, one individual assignment and one group assignment. Group work is a very important part of computing because any type or any time you're working with computing uh, in a professional uh, context, you're not working alone. You are working with a group of people. And so we do try to prepare you for that experience. As you get more senior, some of the courses will specifically try to do that by forcing you to work with groups, work with other people. Um, some of our courses, though, focus uh, digging deeper in specific technologies or in specific skills. And if I want everybody to have that skill, those courses, even if they're senior, would still ask you to do individual work. So there's still a variety. It's hard to say that we have, you know, majority of our courses are group projects because they're not. There's a, there's a strong mix between the two. The differences between a major and minor are really how much work uh, you put in into understanding that and understanding and learning that area. So with the major, you have to meet a certain number of courses in order to get that major or that expertise. Uh, with the minor, it's a little bit more like learning or, or getting an, uh, your feet wet in that area. You are learning enough where you can probably uh, pick up stuff on your own and you can pursue that minor or that, that area on your own. Uh, but it's not enough to say that you have covered all the basics. Right? So you'd find that the differences between them, uh, when it translates practically, is in terms of number of courses you need to complete. For a major, you'd have to complete a number of courses, and for a minor, you'll find that it's significantly smaller, depending on which minors and majors you choose to do, uh, that the workload or the amount of courses that you have to take would be less for a minor. Will I be able to learn how to be an ethical hacker in NES computing? Uh, if you are interested in ethical hacking, I would strongly recommend our information security program uh, or our computer science program. Uh, yes, we do have courses on uh, security and defense of systems and ethical hacking. And um, at that point of, you know, that, that seniority when you are uh, in your third or fourth year, it's up to you to choose which of these courses you'd like to take. Uh, you can pursue that. And we do have students who have graduated and who are working in uh, companies as ethical hackers. Right? They are hired to try to test and uh, look for vulnerabilities in their client systems. I am bad at math. Can I still survive NUS computing? Although math is a very critical skill set in computing, you can survive. It's not a problem. Uh, you will learn along the way and you will have to pick up some math because a lot of computing is based on being able to understand how the technologies are built and a lot of that is on the idea of how math works. Uh, and so we do have courses that you have to take in math, uh, but our students have survived and they have got through this and it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, so even if you're bad at math, by all means, don't, don't use that as something to discourage you. Right? Uh, you will learn here. It's not a problem. So let's see if we have any more questions. All right, we don't have any more questions. Uh, so let's see if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you can post it on our live channels on social media or you can chat with our students directly and staff members directly on Discord or Telegram. Right, so if there are no more, uh, no more questions coming in, uh, we're almost out of time. 
Okay, I think we have some questions coming in. All right, let's try to get them up onto the screen. Okay, in the meantime, maybe I can tell you a little bit more uh, about some of the other common questions that I get, one of which is uh, about internships. Um, so let's put up our slide right now. Uh, so a very common question that students ask or potential students ask is, do I have to do an internship? Well, internships are compulsory for your graduation in computing, and they really offer you a good opportunity to go out there and uh, learn a little bit more about the type of things that are happening outside in corporate environments and what you'd be doing as a computing graduate. Uh, and so we, we have a requirement that our students complete six months worth of internships. And you can do that as three month, two, three month periods for our computer science students. Uh, in information systems, you can do it as a full six month period, uh, either in our ATAP program where you go on an internship by yourself or an RIP program where you actually uh, have two people in a team going to work on a project together. Uh, and those can be some very interesting experiences. All right, so we're running out of time. Let's see if we have one more question uh, that we can take live before we wrap up for today. With the current situation, are we allowed to do overseas internships? Well, the number of opportunities for overseas internships uh, have definitely been affected by the pandemic. So um, with the current situation, uh, having the opportunity to go overseas is, of course, going to be very difficult. Uh, but we're continuously seeing that situation improve. And uh, it will improve, hopefully, to a point where we can support overseas internships and say, yes, we're happy that our students are going overseas. Um, of course, there are other internship opportunities for you, for you to look at in the meantime. Uh, but I would not uh, necessarily encourage uh, many of our students to, to, to jump into that. Now, you don't have to worry too much about this just yet because if you're coming into NUS now, it's going to be a while before you take your first internship. And that'll be a year, maybe two years from now. Uh, and hopefully by then we'll be back uh, to normal and people will be flying around to do their internships. So let's hope that that uh, doesn't, it's not a concern for you just yet. Okay, so we're out of time. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. So if, in case you didn't get your question answered or you think that you might have additional questions after this, please feel free to reach out to us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Like I said, we'll be on Discord uh, today. And from tomorrow through Saturday, you can always chat with us live on Telegram. Um, and if not, just visit our site at join.comp.nus.edu.sg uh, if you'd want to find out more details about how to contact us or if you want to find out details about our programs. Now, one last thing, don't forget that if you're participating in the Break the Hack activity and game and you're trying to get into the lucky draw, you want to make sure that you scan on this QR code right over here. Right? Really important one to scan on. And uh, good luck. Hopefully, you'll be able to win the prize. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope to see you in class uh, next year or the year after that, if you're able to join us. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.